Okay, so last week we did quick breads, which is any type of bread or muffin um, that doesn't use yeast or eggs. So you, if you use baking soda or baking powder to make it rise, that's a quick bread. And today we're gonna do yeast breads. And yeast breads use yeast to make them rise, if you guys could figure that one out. Um, so the most important thing is the temperature of whatever liquid you're using. So um, we usually make bread with water, but um, I thought it might be a treat to make some recipes that use milk. So anytime you add milk, you're adding a little bit of fat to the bread. <laughs> it's called an enriched dough. And so we're gonna start with two and a half, sorry, two and a quarter cups of warm milk. If it is cold, then your bread will not rise. If it is too hot, you will kill the yeast. Remember that yeast is alive. When it's either dry or frozen, it's in a dormant state, which means we have to wake it up to make it work. And what it does is once it hits moisture and warmth, those two things wake it up, and then it wants to start eating because it's like so hungry. And then it eats all of the sugars that are in, um, in the dough and then it starts like burping out little gas bubbles. And that's what makes the, the bread rise, okay? So we wanna wake it up, but we don't wanna kill it. Okay, so um, the, the temperature of whatever liquid you use, whether it's water or milk, um, needs to be about like a bath that you'd give to a baby, okay? So you don't want it to be super hot. You don't want it to be super cold. We want to gently wake up the yeast, but again, don't kill the yeast, okay? Um, the next thing we're going to put in is the yeast, and um, this is dry yeast. I buy it at Costco. It's like $4. If you buy it at the grocery store, it's like $1.50 for little packets of it. Um, I know Costco was out of it for a while, but at least the Costco in Grant's Pat, or I mean in Central Point, Oregon, has uh, some yeast. So we're going to put in a tablespoon of yeast, which is approximately equal to a packet of yeast. A packet, I think, is like two and a quarter teaspoons, um, but it's close enough. It's one of those things where when we're making bread, if we're off by a little bit, it's okay. It's pretty forgiving. If we're making a cake, you want super exact measure measurements. Um, when we're doing a yeast bread, um, it's going to change the texture a little bit based on what we put in, um, but it will still turn out pretty good unless you add too much flour, which we'll talk about in a minute. The next thing we're going to add, Brett, you want to get out two tablespoons of sugar. So we're going to put in some sugar, and again, do you guys remember what I told you that the yeast likes to eat two is tablespoons? the sugar? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we're going to two tablespoons of sugar there and then you want to make sure that your yeast is dissolving into your liquid it dissolves much better in water than it does in milk um, so what sometimes what people will do like this was two and a quarter cups of, of milk sometimes what they do is use a quarter cup of water dissolve the yeast in it and then pour it into two cups of milk um, I just want to I'm just going to give it a little stir just to make sure um, that it's starting to dissolve in the liquid. The next thing we're gonna add is three tablespoons of oil. We'd like to do that as well. And I don't know if your oil is like our oil, but when kids use it, then it's like the lid's oily, the bottle's oily, uh, everything's oily. Okay, so yeah, three. We're gonna do three tablespoons of oil. And again, the fat that we're putting in it, you could use melted butter instead. Instead of, a, instead of the sugar, you could use honey instead, something sweet, and that just activates the yeast a little bit more. So I think we'll just set this over here for now. Um, the next ingredient we're gonna put in is a tablespoon of salt. Um, and I think I'm, we'll just do three teaspoons, which is the same thing because our tablespoon is pretty greasy. Yeah, I'm going to actually pour it over the sink because remember when we do salt, we don't want to put in too much. So I'm going to level it off. I'm going to sprinkle it over a little bit. Sometimes when you're making yeast breads, people will add this after the flour because one thing that the salt does is it inhibits or stops the yeast from activating. And so sometimes they'll add all of the ingredients first, let it sit for a little while, and then add the salt at the end 
just to get a nice fluffy rise out of their bread. So this, this bread that we're doing, because it has fat and sugar in it, is gonna be a really nice, like tender, um, like yummy white sandwich bread. If we wanted something like a pizza crust that's a little bit chewier and crispy on the outside, um, we would use water instead of milk and we wouldn't necessarily add as much sugar. Um, we'd maybe do a little bit of olive oil. Our last thing we're gonna add is flour. And some things that you guys should know about flour is that the different kinds of flour they have at the grocery store um, is just based on how much protein it has. So we're gonna add, you boys can start mixing this in. You can take turns doing it. Here, go, let's leave it there. Um, we're gonna put in six cups of bread flour. So the difference is, um, the amount of protein that the flour has in it. And so, for instance, cake flour has the least amount of protein. Are you guys measuring this in six cups? You guys, can, Lincoln, you wanna do the first one? Count them out as you guys put them in. Say it out loud, always say it out loud when you put something in, that way somebody else can hear you. And then if you forget which one you're at, they'll know. But don't say it until you dump it in. Um, so they're going to be adding six cups of flour. Okay. Um, so cake, wow. cake flour, pastry flour, all-purpose flour, bread flour goes in order from least protein to most protein. And what the protein does um, is it develops these gluten strands. And so when we're going to knead this, we want there to be lots of protein to develop lots of gluten strands, and that what, that's what makes a yummy, chewy bread. Um, so they're gonna put that in and we will be right back once all the ingredients are in. Okay, so um, we, have, we have all six cups of flour in this. So if you have a mixer, use the dough hook and mix it until it forms a smooth ball. If you do not have a mixer, Mix it with a wooden spoon for a little while till it starts to clump together, and then you can knead it by hand. Boys, please stop. Stop, stop being young, please. Um, if you don't have a mixer, just mix it by hand, and then um, you're gonna knead it on the counter, which is fold and push, fold it in half and push, fold and push until it's smooth. Then we're gonna cover this. We're gonna let it rise in the bowl for 30 minutes. Then we're gonna shape it. We're gonna let it rise for another 20 or 30 minutes and then we're gonna bake it. Okay, so we'll be back when it's time to shape. Okay, so this has been rising for about 20 minutes. You just wanna make sure that it has about doubled in volume. I covered it with saran wrap to keep it nice and moist. And so you can see that before I put it, um, let it rise, we shaped it into a ball. And then, and you guys touch this. You guys all washed your hands, right? Oh, they're clean. <laughs> they're clean? <laughs> so you guys touch it. Tell me what it feels like. Smushy. Smushy? Okay, is it rock hard? No. No, it's nice and soft. It feels like a baby's bottom. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you've ever changed any diapers, and I've changed like a million, this is what a squishy little baby bottom feels like. So. Okay. All right, so that's enough help right now. So, so what we're going to do... So the way that you're going to shape it is, okay, you guys can help me with that later. Right now, I want you guys to pay attention. <laughs> so we're going to shape it into a, tell me you guys what you think the shape is. What shape is this? Square. Rectangle. Good. It's square-ish. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's about as long as my pants. Okay, which reminds me of something else. You wanna make sure that you either butter or oil your pan so that your yummy loaf doesn't stick. Okay, and then once you have your rectangle, you are going to roll it up, roll it up. That way you get a loaf that's evenly shaped instead of like really high on one side and low on the other side. And then we're gonna tuck the ends in. Tuck, tuck, tuck. <laughs> And then I'm gonna put this in my pan and I'm going to let it rise again for about 20-ish minutes until it doubles. And then we're going to, excuse me, I think it's from the um, cooking spray, but we're gonna bake it um, at 350 and I will give you the time later. <laughs> 
And here is what our loaf looks like right before we put it in the oven. It's been rising. You can see it's puffed up um, about an inch above the rim there. And so we're going to put this in the oven at 350 for... I am, sweetie pie. We're going to put it in for 25 minutes. Okay, and here is our finished loaf. And so I have a mistake in the recipe. It should be 45 minutes, not 25 minutes. Um, but as, because as you can see, this is a pretty big loaf. Um, if you were to make two smaller loaves, it would be 25 minutes. But for the one big loaf, you want to cook it for about 45 minutes. This is where I poked it with a thermometer. And um, it's 200 degrees is the temperature you're looking for when it's done. And that's it.